Okay, I'm going to make a video. Uh, sorry, it might be a longer one. Um, but people have been asking about getting files from vCarve into UGS and running a job, basically the whole startup procedure. So if you uh, have never done it before, uh, this video may help you. Um, so here we are in vCarve. I already did the tool pass. For that kind of stuff, uh, you need to go to vetric.com and watch all their tutorials. Uh, they are the best out there, um, very good all the way through. Um, I just want to show you basically from this point on, I already made the tool paths. I have my roughing, I have my 3D pass, and I have my cutout. Uh, this is an outrigger for a catamaran style uh, rain gutter regatta boat. Okay. It's upside down right now. Um, so first thing you do is select one tool at a time, unless they are exactly the same tool, and they run uh, one right after the other. So let's say my roughing and my 3D pass, I both use an eighth inch ball nose. I could select both of these, and it would be okay. It would save it as one file, uh, which can save you time just by opening the file and selling the next one to run. Um, obviously right here, because they are two different tools, one's an end mill and the other one is a uh, ball nose, it's giving me an error. It says they use different tools. Uh, that's the key. They can be different uh, settings between the two tool paths. They can be completely different types, but if they use the same tool itself uh, you can do that but where we didn't so here I have my post processor processor selected this is one off my website okay uh, you hit save tool pass and you save it to a folder one at a time by deselecting and then selecting again save it uh, it helps to name them something that will make sense as you can see here I have the first file with 01 roughing and then the ball the size bit uh, which is a end mill eighth inch end mill uh, and so on and so forth okay so after you get that saved okay we're going over to our uh, computer that runs my X carve uh, so I already have it on I turned it on but I didn't start anything yet so it's powered up we're gonna go to UGS this is the version that's on my website, by the way. Okay. Uh, we're going to open the COM port. And I have homing uh, enabled. So it's going to alarm. That is normal. Because I have homing enabled, it will not allow me to move anything until I run a homing cycle. The homing cycle is the dollar sign H. I'm going to hit that, and it's going to run through the homing cycle. And this is the uh, CNC for newbie uh, square drive. It is very nice. Okay, so now we're homed. Uh, there's a couple things that you could do depending on what kind of project you're running. Uh, I use a bump stop. Okay, that's underneath these clamps. Basically, all it is is the corner where I flatten my uh, waste board. Um, that is my G28 location. I have another video on G28, G30, but basically it's a parking spot that you can set X, Y, and Z. Z you should always have as far up as you can go. Um, so when you hit G28, the spindle moves up and over your zero point over here. But I'm doing a different uh, type of project today. I'm running. I'm going to be uh, milling. A piece from the waste board okay so in in V carve if we go over and we look at the uh, setup I have it from machine bed okay which basically means the bottom of the material. 
Now I have that because uh, I want that to be exact. I want that surface to be exact because this is, uh, I don't want to say regulation, we're doing this for fun, but I want to keep it uh, as regulation as I can. So that's my control surface. Okay. So what I have here is my blank that uh, I use the blue painter's tape and super glue method. This is the super glue I use. It holds very uh, fast. I have that as uh, close to square as I can. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to jog over and zero my... Uh, zero my bit or my spindle on this corner here okay I'm going to show you one way to do it that if there was a clamp right here okay it would cover it up or it would uh, you'd be able to do it even if the corner is covered if you want to get pretty close I recommend putting a v-bit okay, right here I have the white side 1540 v-bit it's very pointy uh, and we use that, we're going to use that to zero on the material. Okay. So, and I'm going to be probing uh, from the uh, this area here. This is where I'm going to set my probe every time uh, to zero the bit. Alright, so first thing I'm going to do um, after I opened up here and I homed, here's my... my uh, jogging uh, settings and all that stuff feed rate uh, should be your rapid rate which is 315 for the X carve uh, these you'll change based on uh, what you need okay I am going to up that not quite that far but let's go two inches at a time I'm going to jog over Okay, and I'm going to up my z-axis to a one-inch jogs because I got a long ways to go. And then I'll slow it down. Let's see here. Loosen up my. There we go. Get my dust shoe about right. down okay so I'm going to jog my V bit till it is over uh, change the settings first I'll do it at a tenth of an inch increment uh, let's say that let's say that there was a clamp right there and we wanted to uh, get that corner though as your zero mark you would go to the left edge okay set my increments real small okay so you would go to the left edge and that's close enough for my purposes and then you go over here and you'd reset the x-axis okay that left edge is right there reset x now that is my left edge now I'll go over here I'll increase my increments again raise it up a little bit and I'm gonna jog over here and we're gonna go on that other side of that imaginary clamp okay and we will go until roughly we're at the front edge. Uh, again, this is just a quick way to do it. Uh, that I'm doing it because it's it's not that uh, I don't have to be that accurate with this job. And there is reset Y. So now the actual zero point is right in that corner. Uh, I have a macro okay, that I use 
right, so let's see, right here, this one here. This will move the spindle over to X, Y, zero without moving the Z. This one here will move X, Y, and zero, and then move the Z to zero. We don't really want that. We just want this one. So we're gonna click number three, and I should be roughly over uh, the corner. Okay. And that is basically how you can do it. The next step would be to jog. Now, uh, for jogging, like I said, or not to jog, to probe. Uh, for probing, like I said, I'm going to be probing my bit. i got to change the bit. I'm going to be probing my bit right here. I'm going to do that in the same place every time. So what I'll probably do is trace the uh, left and right side. So this can be about as close uh, to the same point, or I'll just leave it there. Um, but anyways, uh, that is another topic altogether, probing. That's how to basically start up and get a job set up. Uh, it's already 11 minutes, this video. Um, I'm not sure how long it'll allow me to upload to YouTube. So worst case scenario, I'll upload this directly to our group. Um, but then for loading the G-code file, you'll go to wherever your file are. Let's see, I got some stuff right here. You'll load the file. It'll tell you all the information about the, the, the file right here, uh, except DuraStation. DuraStation, by the way, is just a straight calculation between how many rows have been sent and the time that has passed uh, the DuraStation and then the uh, or duration and then uh, the rows remaining it's just a straight calculation between those so that's a quick run through of uh, how to start a job in UGS from vCarve if you need more stuff uh, shown uh, just leave some comments for me and I will uh, try to detail that stuff out at a later date thanks